purpose for coming up here was to uh, uh, introduce you to Alan. Alan is the owner of uh, Sushi Sky Japanese Restaurant. Alan uh, speaks uh, Mandarin and I think he's willing to say a few words. Okay, uh, how do we say? I just thank you for the opportunity. Thank you very much. Cristiano Luca, I am the youth worker for Flemington Neighborhood Services, and on behalf of FNS, we'd like to thank you for being here today. I just would like to pass the microphone over to Jesse Pacho, who is our mentor artist. He's going to give you a little bit more background on the project, and he's also going to introduce our youth artists. Jesse. Uh, thank you for being here today. Um, and like Christiana said, it's a very important day for us, and it's important for everyone that's here uh, to see the unveiling of this mural. I just want to talk to you a bit about this project and how the mural sort of came to be. Um, this summer, I worked in partnership with FNS and a team of five great youth artists who I'm going to introduce in a minute uh, to paint this mural, our Highway of Heroes dedication. And, oh no. <laughs> well, there's a mural, guys. I want to say a big thank you to FNS for making this happen. Uh, to Scott Mills for all the hard work he's put into having this wall um, and helping us get it. And also a huge thanks to my team of youth artists this summer. I mean, at the end of the day, this wasn't possible without all their hard work. So I'd like to give them a round of applause. And I just want to introduce my team to you guys. Uh, we've got Nasli, Kanal, Satis, Tanzila, and Maria. You guys know this is a dedication mural for the Highway of Heroes, and we just felt that it was really important to show um, honor and to respect those soldiers who have given their time um, for the country and for Canada. So we also wanted to show respect to the families of those soldiers because we really appreciate what they do. So, you know, can you explain um, the symbols? Hey there everyone, my name is Kunal Chandidas, and I'm one of the artists that was a part of this project. Um, starting off with the main focal point of this mural, which is the bird in the middle. Um, it's supposed to be a dove, and it's supposed to signify love and peace for um, Canada and all the soldiers that have put their lives on the line for the freedom of this country. Um, the properties on the, gra on the grass on either side are supposed to signify the remembrance for the fallen soldiers. And pretty much the whole mural just um, is supposed to give a smile to those families that have lost their soldiers in um, other countries. And it's the interaction with the people around us who normally on a normal day would probably look at us and think otherwise. But we noticed that people were warming up to us walking through these alleyways and we were getting people stopping and congratulating us and even just wanting to have random conversations with us during the painting of this mural. Another thing I noticed is that uh, before we painted the mural in this alleyway, it was kind of messy and it was a back alleyway with like graffiti on the wall and stuff. But I noticed that people in this area started to care about this alleyway. I mean on the final day when we were cleaning up, I noticed one of the residents in the building coming to clean up the alleyway after we had done our work. So that was just another powerful thing that I thought. The families of the fall and the army as a whole deeply appreciate gestures like this. We deeply appreciate the people who collect on those bridges on the Highway of Heroes, showing their respect for the soldiers coming home and for the soldiers who continue to serve overseas. This city of Toronto has sent soldiers to Afghanistan who have come back along the Highway of Heroes. A young man from Regent Park, a young man who grew up on the Danforth, a young man from Mississauga. At the moment, the Army Reserve Brigade from Toronto has got 130 soldiers serving in Kandahar and elsewhere in Afghanistan. And they appreciate very deeply this kind of gesture. Thank you very much. If you're a family who has lost someone in war, um, nothing can bring that loved person back. But if the rest of us as a community can honor that, then I think some mitigation of that pain. So um, thank you everybody who made 
made this happen, and uh, congratulations to the young people. Thank you. This is a graffiti community building. Uh, for those of you to wonder what, how does this come about that a police officer is involved with something to do with graffiti, it's uh, Youth and Neighborhoods, a positive approach to graffiti management. It's about giving kids opportunities, uh, putting some funding into those opportunities, and uh, doing things with purpose, with process, and the kids and the artists come through with the payoff as you're seeing today. So uh, that's what it's all I about. I thank the reservists who are here today um, for your ongoing work uh, at uh, reminding us of what it means and the costs of peace and freedom. I thank the artists for uh, making that real for us today. It's a, a privilege to be your MP. Thanks. Well, I got news for you. One of these signs is coming down. Uh, sorry that we weren't able to get it taken down in advance of the work that was done by the artists. Thank you for working around it. Uh, but this sign here that obscures your, your hard work, uh, the order has been placed to remove that pole so that the obstruction will not be, not be there for much longer. Okay, that concludes the unveiling of the mural. Thank you all for being here. And again, thank you to my team and at the Ness, Scott Mills. And we're just really happy that you're all able to take time out of your day to come and support the unveiling of this. So thank you for being here. And hopefully Constable Tim Broadhagen, and I am a community officer in 54 Division, which deals with the Fleming and Park area. Uh, I'm ecstatic to see this wall, being a former uh, member of the Canadian Armed Forces, 2nd Battalion, Princess Patricia Daylight Infantry. I've been overseas myself. It's just great to see positive uh, things being done by the youth and being recognized by the youth of the Fleming and area. Uh, generally, when there's problems in the area, we tend to see on the, in the media and in the news uh, only the negative aspects of that uh, community. But it is a really great, uh, it's just great to see the parents and the kids and, and coming out in a positive attitude and being recognized in a positive attitude. Because there's a lot that that community has to offer and a lot that we should be uh, getting involved in. Uh, we get involved with the youth a lot in that area and uh, we're just, I'm just happy to be here to see this and, uh, and to congratulate the youth that were involved in this and in making this happen. With the uh, Canadian Army Veterans, uh, we're a Veterans Motorcycle Club. It's, uh, it's mostly a charitable organization. We raise a lot of money for charity. Uh, most of the members of the CAV are uh, retired soldiers and uh, sailors and uh, Air Force personnel. Uh, so we come down to these uh, repatriation ceremonies. Unfortunately, since uh, the war in Afghanistan has started, we've had a lot of uh, a lot of soldiers that haven't made it back. I like to line the streets, sort of pay our last respects to the families and the, the fallen. So they go into uh, the corner's office and then back to their, their homes. Um, as I came by today, I actually saw a rough drawing of it on the internet on a piece of paper, and it was, uh, it was pretty impressive. Uh, as I came up the alley behind you there, uh, I was actually really impressed. I was, uh, even the size and the size of the shiny, everything is really pulling behind the soldiers and it's a really great feeling. I'm really happy to be a part of to be a part of it. As a former soldier myself I can see how this mural would mean a lot to families of uh, fallen troops as they're brought home here and the last thing they see uh, before entering the coroner's office. Uh, personally I was in the uh, Canadian Armed Forces and Royal Canadian Regiment from 1988 to 91. I can uh, obviously relate to what the soldiers are going through.